Number one from the 2007 Higher Maths Paper 2, angle between vectors questions. Eight marks, should be nice and easy. It's got three parts, but the first two parts are so short, we'll just do it all in one go. For part A, it says, what are the coordinates of the vertex G? In this, as it describes it, cube of side 2, it is verified by the coordinates of B, with 2 for the distance along and back, where P is the centre of the left-hand face, O, C, G, D, and Q is the centre of the back face, C, B, F, G. Well, first of all, what are the coordinates of G? Well, to get to the point G, I'd start at the origin. Don't go any distance along the X direction, but go back along the Y axis for the length of the cube, which is 2, and then go up the full height of the cube, which is also 2. B. Find the position vectors of P and Q. Well, I'll start off just by getting their coordinates. Now, P sits at the centre of this left-hand face, so it's nothing along in the X direction, but I'll be going halfway back and then halfway up to get to the centre. Halfway back would be 1, and halfway up would also be 1, which means that the position vector of P is 0, 1, 1. Similarly for Q. Q is at the centre of the rear face. Now this time I'll have to go halfway along the X direction, then all the way back, and then halfway up the back face. So it's halfway along in the X direction, halfway along that front edge, 1, right across the floor for 2, and then halfway up the back wall for 1, giving its position vector as 1, 2, 1. And for part C, what's the size of angle P, O, Q? Now, if you want angle P, O, Q, the two vectors you'll need will be the vectors that radiate from the centre, from the vertex of the angle. In the diagram, the angle is this. The angle between those two vectors is this acute angle in here. Right, so what we've got, we're going to use the scalar product. There are two ways of working at the scalar product. I'm using the vectors P and Q. You could work out P dot Q, the scalar product, by multiplying the corresponding components and adding them up. You can also work out the scalar product P dot Q by multiplying their lengths times the cosine of the angle in between them, which is P O Q. And then just rearrange that. So cos POQ, being the angle that you want, will be P dot Q, the scalar product, evaluated via the components, divided by the lengths of those two vectors. Now, I'm not going to do all the wee bits and pieces over here. There's plenty of room just to put all the calculations down in one, especially since they're such small numbers. Right, P dot Q means multiply and add the corresponding components. X components, 0 times 1. Y components, 1 times 2. Z components, 1 times 1. That's that taken care of. The length of P, Pythagoras in the three dimensions. Square and add the components. 0 squared, 1 squared, 1 squared. 0 squared, 1 squared, 1 squared. Q, similarly, square and add the components. 1 squared, 2 squared, 1 squared. Now tidy that all up. It's not going to take a lot of arithmetic here. Nothing and 2 and 1 makes 3. 1 and 1 is 2. So I've got the square root of 2. And here I've got 1 and 1 and 4 makes 6. Now I could probably tidy that up a bit. It's paper 2, so strictly speaking, I could just put that all into my calculator and do inverse cos. But I think I'll just play around with this for a while because I can see things appearing here. That's 3 over root 12. Now, root 12 is 4 times 3, is 2 root 3. So that's 3 over 2 root 3. This is beginning to look a little bit paper 1-ish now, because the root 3 will cancel out that top root 3. I know I'm from the wee trail here of roots. So that makes it root 3 up in 2, and I recognise root 3 up in 2. Root 3 up in 2 is the cosine of 30. So I don't even need a calculator. That's going to be in paper 1. So straight away I can say this thing. I'll put it down this way. P O Q is going to be inverse cos of root 3 upon 2, and without a single glance at my calculator, that means it's going to be exactly 30 degrees. Well, there was 8 marks, fairly painlessly.